Wow, it is really hot in here. Okay, so I was planning on doing a video earlier, but I ordered some marijuana from a delivery service. For those of you that aren't in California or a state where it's legal, you can just call like you're ordering a pizza and, you know, they have a menu. I got an eighth of some top shelf indica, purple kush. It's an OG strain though. And I got a gram of something else. I got a pre-roll joint. Anyway, to make a long story short, they included these Fruit Loop edibles. And what it is, is it's like Fruit Loops with like marshmallow. And if you eat it, it gets you high, allegedly. Now, I only smoke weed at night. I have to smoke weed at night, you know? Um, and, you know, we talk about it a million times, but I get slaughtered. I think I'm going to put this video um, for every tier as well. This is a Florida story, but, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I feel like you guys have been waiting for a video for a while, and I felt like doing Florida. So we're going to do that. But anyway, the point of the story with the edibles is, see how my mind is? It's so ADD. I took a bite. Now, I'm on a strict paleo diet because I'm going to be in a movie coming up. Uh, it was supposed to happen at the end of this month in Northern California, I have to go up and do the final shoot for my documentary too. Like a final monologue to wrap the whole movie up. And, um, what was that? What was that? I mean, wow. This is why I haven't recorded a video yet because I ate the edible. Oh, when I was talking about the paleo diet, it's very strict. I can only eat meat, vegetables, dong. Hey, Babe, can I get a dong in my mouth? She's like, yeah, I got you. You hungry, babe? I'm like, yeah, I need a dong. She's like, oh, I got you. And then she, okay, anyway. I can't even make funny jokes when I'm stoned. Um, because I'm on the, the strict paleo diet, when I eat anything that's not that, you know, that's not boring paleo food, like the marshmallow Fruit Loops, I just took a little taste Honestly, this is what happened. I did not mean to get as stoned as I got. But my body, like, hasn't had sweets like that for so long that it just went crazy. And it just, like, it was almost like I wasn't even in control anymore. I'd lost complete control. And I ate, like, half of this fucking bag. Now, I don't like weed like that. I smoke weed at night because, as funny as my stories may be to you, I actually lived them, especially like the prison stuff was pretty traumatic and I was already mentally ill before prison, but prison made me way, way, way more mentally ill. I'm so mentally, hey dog, I'm so fucking mentally ill. I'm, I'm the fucking illest dog. There's nobody iller than me except for you dog. Like, that doesn't make sense. Hey fool, I didn't go to college dog. You don't need a fucking... Whip out your intelligence. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I just can't land jokes right now. I'm aware of it. I've spoken to upper management about it. And no more THC uh, ingestion. Ingestion? Yeah. No more THC ingestion before videos. Because it just makes me totally off the mark. So I ate half of this bag. And edibles are weird, right? It, and like I said, I was just doing it to taste it. I just was like, damn, that looks good. And I, I started eating it and then I was just like, oh, oh, I need this. And then I went to sleep right after because I just worked out. It was like right after working out, I went and I took a shower and I laid down. Nico came and he like cuddled up with me and we passed out. I woke up and I was uncomfortably stoned. I don't know if anybody's ever gotten like that, but edibles have a funny way of doing that. Just sneaking up on you and they can be, they can be vicious from Santa Barbara. Eh, it didn't sound right either, did it? <laughs> I see, I know how I sound. It's not just you that hears me. I hear myself and I'm like, oh man. And also this, if you can, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm dealing with that. I don't have a splint on, but look at that. That looks crazy. That's like hills have eyes type shit. Yeah, look at my other hand here. Look at my other hand compared to that. 
Yeah, that's a big difference, man. Yeah. Anyway, let's chill. So, I woke up just completely, like, room spinning, exorcist type shit. Started fingering myself with a crucifix. Karina was like, oh my god, you're stoned. I was like, what? It's the first thing you accuse me of when I'm fingering myself with a crucifix? Again, crickets. Anyway, at least I'm, I'm fucking up on jokes in, like, the opening to the video instead of... I'm at, Imagine if we were, like, in the middle of the story and I just started stumbling like this. It could be bad. Earlier, Karina was... I was, like, telling Karina, I was like, oh, I'm so mad. I fucked up. You know, I wanted to do a couple videos tonight. And she's like, well, maybe you should try. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She's like, well, they could be magic. I was like, did you seriously just say that? If I'm stoned... I might make some magical videos. And she's like, that's right. That was like four hours ago and I'm still stoned. I, I ate the shit at six o'clock. There's nothing magical about it. I'm just, you know, sometimes, and you start getting in your head and you start like regretting stuff that you post on Facebook from like three weeks ago. And you're like, fuck, you scramble to go on your timeline to find it. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I posted something so divisive. We're already so divided. No need to just keep bitching and throwing fuel on the fire, is there? <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's get into the story. I think I'm past, like, the kind of awkwardness of being really... St I'm, like, I've gotten used to it. Like, I know that you know, that I know, that you know. If you know what I mean? So let's get into the story. So, oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad. I just try to do like normal chin scratches and it's, it's like getting waterboarded or something. It's crazy. It's like to the point where I'm like, man, should I just delete this? This is garbage. I don't know. Remember that one time I was on GHB and I was like trying to raffle off herpes, herpes cultures. Yeah. Karina didn't forget either. She brings that shit up all the time people like dm her They're like hey can i have some herpes she's like oh my god no okay let's get into the story so where i was since this is going to be a freebie for all tiers i don't know if i had posted something exclusively on the ten dollar tier or not with the florida story remember i posted and someone was like we've already heard this story we're here to like a year ago you're a piece of shit leone cut your wrist i'm like all right and then i did and then i didn't post for a few days i was recovering but I th I'm pretty sure you guys heard what happened. So basically went out to Florida. I ran away a bunch of times. I got on heroin out there and then I left with this other girl and then this other girl died. And then we kind of just inadvertently got swept into this web of underage brothels and Mike Virgin, the crack smoking pimp and Eddie, the black guy that looks like Biggie Smalls, those guys. And then a bunch of really crazy stuff happened. And then someone said that I made the story up, and I definitely didn't. Are you serious? That would be a very creative story to make up. I wish that I had. Um, but no, this actually all really happened. And then come to find out that at the end of all that, I got set up by a pedophile cop in Florida. And now, all these years later, with all the Epstein scandal breaking out in um, southern Florida where this took place... Uh, I found some interesting connections, which we will get into. Probably not on this video, since it's for all tiers. I make you guys earn this knowledge about the Epstein-Mike Virgin connection. But I got arrested because when I got out of Lou's car, heroin fell down and I kicked it and it hit a cop in the shoe. <coughs> I ended up getting tricked and kind of coerced and to tell the police that I planned on selling one of the bags of heroin so that I could do the other one for free. I got charged with possession with intent to sell. My parents were on a cruise to Italy. And I was probably the only white guy in the unit. I go for breakfast and some black... I, I grab the tray. And they feed well in Florida. I'll say 
probably like the two best jails that I've ever had, you know, I've been, ever been fed in. It sounds so ridiculous. Hey, my two favorite places that I was fed, you know, you fed with the fuck. You don't even sound like a human being at that time. Hey, bro, they're going to feed us right now. Psh, psh, psh. Feed time, man. Feed. Oh, OK. All right. Hey, talk to you after they feed us. You know, it sounds weird, right? I mean, I guess your parents feed you. No one feeds me now. I guess Karina does. Unless she's mad at me. And then I have to eat. Um, what are those things called? Crustables. Where it's just like the inner part of a sandwich. The crust has been cut off. Yeah, well, that's the only thing I know how to make. And we buy them for Nico. And then Karina's like, oh my God, you're such a, pe you're such a fucking selfish piece of shit. Those are for Nico. Learn how to cook something, you fucking loser. I'm like, oh my god. We should definitely get married. Been here before and I'm about it again. They fed really good at this place though. They gave they gave like French toast, little sausage links, um really shitty fried or uh, fried. Really shitty scrambled eggs. But like when you're in jail, like, everything's so shitty anyway that you just expect it to taste shitty. So it's, it's like, balances it out. You know, it's, it's a bit, taste about the same as, as scrambled eggs would taste for you. Except if you just had this as an isolated food, it would taste like rubber. That's what it tastes like. But, like, in jail, you're like, fuck yes. Need that. And you just scoop it in your mouth and you love it. That's jail. So I put my tray down. Now remember, I'm kicking not only heroin, but I've been on methadone for about a month. You know, nothing like the time when I went to the feds in 2009 and I kicked 180 milligrams of methadone cold turkey. And I've been on the clinic for three years. Remember that? They tried to give me the 800 milligram ibuprofen. The strong kind. That didn't hit either. I'm getting better though. I'm like loosening up. Like I'm like, fuck being stoned. I'm just going to navigate. I mean, because you know when you get so stoned that you feel intergalactic? Like you feel like you're being like puppeteered by lasers and shit? I'm probably the only one that gets like that. It's weird. I have mental health problems though. So that's probably why. Ah. Okay, so anyway. Been doing methadone for about a month. Been doing China White. I've been smoking crack. You know, people say, well, there's no, there's no withdrawal with cocaine. Um, I beg to differ. It makes you very, very, very depressed. And if you're kicking heroin and methadone on top of that, it just really amplifies it to uh, suicidal ideation. You know, I thought about killing myself a bunch of times when I was at this place and you'll find out why. So anyway, so I grab, I'm kicking. I'm not happy. I've been charged with possession with intent to sell. I'm asking people how much time I'm going to get. The, oh, man, you fucked. You fucked, boy. Can you just give me like a like a number? Like months, three months, six months? Years, boy, years. You, you threw, as they say. As they say up in Gainesville, you threw. Which, you know, like when you're kicking, you're just like, fuck my life. And then, you know, you're with all these racist Haitian dudes. They hate white people. They tell you that. They're like, I hate you. Why do, why do you hate me? Because you're white. And you're a bitch. Oh, all right. Can I go to my bunk now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. I kind of like you, Kelly. Coolest bitch in here. You're like, yeah. So I get my food tray put it down some black guy comes up and and takes it from me I'm like oh that's cool all right hearing mariah carey songs in my head and shit just kind of like get up like nothing happened like huh <laughs> it's nap time guys i'm gonna i'm gonna go hit the bunk Maybe read some of the New Testament or something, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling sitting at this table right here. I'm the only one there without a tray. And the the way that these guys would look at me was like straight up scary. Like it was definitely 
Yeah, I know I joke about butt fucking a lot, but this was. They wanted to kill me. They wanted to eat me. With a dash of butt fucking, you could see it in their eyes. There was like this gleam. And then there was a couple weirdos that, like, you could tell was a different kind of that. That, that those guys wanted to suck me off, you know. Oh man, I want to suck that little dude off, man. Ooh. <laughs> The Elvis black guy from West Palm. And this was at gun club. Anyway, you know, just so that people don't get weirded out by the chronology or anything. Weirded out? I don't know why I said that. That was a weird thing to say. So that people don't get confused with the chronology. At this point, I'm at gun club, which is in West Palm Beach um, in Florida. Horrible place where it's predominantly elderly people. There's white guys that think they're black. They have grills in their teeth. They have integrity tattooed on their arm. They wear FUBU jean shorts and they wear worker boots. And they listen to Birdman, shit like that. Yeah. This was like before Birdman's time, but you know what the fuck I'm saying. All right, so anyway, so I go back to my bunk after getting punked out and I. You know, I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen Big Daddy, like where he gives him the sunglasses. He's like, hey, when you're wearing these, you're invisible. That's how I felt in this bunk. I just pulled this like really jaily blanket. You know, when I say jaily, I mean, it's like very like the threading is very loose. You can smell like multi-generational cum stains. Like it smells like some sort of like Pennywell or something. It's fucking gnarly. And then, like, you know how old people have this, like, distinct odor of old people manure? You know? It's just, like, because you're in this whole room of people that have to wipe their ass, but they have shit. Like a retirement home. You know what I'm talking about. If you've been to one, you know what I'm talking about. That's how this blanket smelled. But I didn't give a fuck. I did not want to look at these guys because I knew they wanted to hurt me. Now, you can't sleep, you know, when you kick heroin, <coughs> when you kick heroin, it's hard to sleep, right? But when you're kicking methadone, it's impossible. It's impossible. You feel like you're tweaking on some like, you know what it feels like it, outside of it feeling like you're tweaking. For any of, of you that have kicked heroin, it's nothing like that. So don't even compare heroin and methadone because they're two completely different kicks methadone is some medieval torturous horrible shit it is nothing like kicking heroin like your bones feel like they're splitting at the seams um and you it feels like you're on acid it really does it feels like you're on acid in every sense like the extreme psychological terror of being on acid. I'm talking about when you're on a bad trip, which everybody, I don't care who you are. Even I've had a bad trip, and I love acid. I've had a bad trip, though. Yeah. Can't win them all. But I've also done this shit probably literally three or four hundred times in my life, which is significant. It might even be more than that. Who fucking knows? But a lot. I used to do it all the time and this is kind of what it feels like being on bad acid that's how bad kicking methadone feels even if you're only doing it for a month you're gonna have that severity that's a hundred notches worse than heroin so i'm in my blanket trying to act, and i'm not even you know what like i hadn't perfected my pop the tent with my knee and masturbate strategy yet and like i didn't want to do that here you know this is the kind of place where getting your head cut off and like put on a mop handle was probable. Like it was like, well, that's probably more likely to happen than not. So imagine kicking worse than heroin. Like you're on bad acid. You're going through extreme bouts of psychological terror. You have some black dude take your tray. You're the only white guy in there. They're all Haitian and Puerto Rican. And you hear it. You hear them be like, look that white boy looks like a straight bitch and you like and and like you're not even trying to look like a bitch but like how can you not look like a bitch when you when you like peer out of the blanket and like yeah i'm talking about you bitch and you're like fuck and you like put it back on and that's how it was i swear it was pretty crazy so you know i'm not beating off 
um, like I said, in the bunk. But listen, I'm such a bad masturbator. I'm such a chronic person that jerks off chronically that I would go to the shower every 15, 20 minutes, even though that is complete torture. Anybody that's kicked knows what I'm talking about. It's not going in that's bad. It's getting out. That extreme change of temperature in jail and prison showers are usually, um, oh, or something on my lip, are usually pretty cold to begin with. But I would go into these single showers. Now, the whole time in my bad acid, hyper methadone, you know, nightmare trip that I'm on, I'm thinking I'm going to get raped, you know, and it's hard to beat off clandestine in secrecy when you think you're going to get raped by about 60 Haitian dudes. It, it literally, I, I'm not even, I'm not trying to have this sound racist at all, but I felt like I was on an island or something with a bunch of these like, you know, um, like an angry tribe of people that wanted to kill me because I look different. It's the most racist people I'd ever seen. But I go to the bathroom frequently or the shower frequently. I'd masturbate. And then I'd probably cry and then try to look tough, but I didn't because remember, all I had was the sun tattoo and the fear and loathing tattoo. I remember, so I was like, so I'd already gotten punked out for my breakfast tray, right? And this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey man, what's up, man? I'm Kobe. I'm like, hey, what's up, Kobe? He's like, oh, nothing, man. He's like, I just want to tell you that I do, I do everything, bro. I rap, I'm a magician. I am a street dancer. I am a security guard. I know karate. Um, uh, this kid was like 20, right? And he's like, and I'm also a tattoo artist, man. He's like, I see that you have some ink yourself. I was like, yeah, I got some work done. You know, you know how, you know how people get like that with tattoos? They get all lame. Like, yeah, man, we're, man, my skin really takes well to ink. You know what, man? I'm going to wear a tattoo shop t-shirt so that people know that I got a tattoo there, but they don't have a tattoo. They have like one barbed wire thing right there. <laughs> and they have like a bucket Fisher cap on. And I'm just like, yeah, dude, extreme tattoo shop. It's where I go for my work, bro. It's a lot of people like that. But when he said that uh, he did tattoo, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd only seen in movies you know, where people are like, you know, in the movies, they exaggerate shit. People have like bandanas on and they're like doing sit-ups and people are like tattooing them by like throwing darts dipped in ink. And they're like, just like, yeah, look at this sword with the snake coiling around it. And he's like, man, brother, you're a convict. I know. Let's get out and rob a bank. Whew. You know, you know, the, the corny. Okay. Anyway. So this guy said that he could do a tattoo for me. He's like, he's like, hey man, uh, you know, this is after he told me he's a magician, all this shit. And I'm like, and I'm just, I'm sickly. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, tattoos, that sounds, yeah. He's like, all right, man, uh, what do you want? I'm like, <laughs> anybody that, that, that knows me in real life is going to make fun of me right now, but and maybe you will too, but. I'm like, I won't laugh now. Try later. Right there. It's just some street poetry that I've been kind of arranging and rearranging. Laugh now, cry later. The guy's like, I do magicians, I do cards, I do all that. I keep making him sound like he's some old guy, but he's not. So we agreed that he was going to tattoo, laugh now, cry later on me. And he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, yeah, man. Uh. And he was like, well, okay, you know, if you're green, if you're a fish, right? This is what I was for sure. I remember the first time I went to Santa Barbara County Jail and some Southsiders tried to give me like a little package full of meth to give to somebody, to give the Papa criminal or whatever. Hey, dog, can you, can you give this to Baby Bam Bam? I heard he's smoking with baby stoner. I don't know. Baby poppy's kind of mad at baby baba or whatever. You know, it's crazy shit. Um, and I ended up getting beat up. I was still green at that point. Now, I'd been to jail. Because remember, before the Florida story started, I ran out of a courtroom. 
straight up. I had been on probation for a battery. They were every time that I got a dirty test, they give me 30 days, then 60 days, 90 days, 180 days. You know, finally they were trying to give me the six months, the 180 days. And I ran out of the courtroom. So I had done my fair share of jail time up until this up to this point. I was 19 now. No, 20. I just turned 20. Just turned 20 right before the Mike Virgin incident. Um and just because you get acclimated to doing time on the West Coast, where things are weird. I mean, we have weird politics out here. Whoa, whoa, man. Did you just did you just burp in the same room that a black dude farted? Yeah, man. I didn't know. It doesn't matter if you didn't know, brother. You're getting your throat slit tonight around nine. Around nine tonight? Around nine tonight, you're getting your throat slit. Fucking piece of shit, man. Hey. Hey, come here. Come here, ang angry Todd. Come here. Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, angry Todd. Come here, man. Fucking burp for a fucking black dude farted. Paul, oh, man, what a piece of shit. Throat slit, nine o'clock? Yeah, I told him the same shit. Nine o'clock tonight, bitch. See you there. So that's like California politics, right? You go out, and I'm like, I always hated the politics in California. I hate them now. You know, in those politics, really, at the end of my third term, I program with S and Y. I'm really considered a piece of shit fuckhead. Like, I should just kill myself now. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm not solid anymore. Fuck, I gotta go, bro. But it doesn't work like that because I have a kid, and that's what I consider solid. But anyway... What's kind of cool about doing time on the West Coast is that there are politics set in place so that you can't, like, get your fucking tray taken by a black dude. That doesn't happen in California. Well, it happens sometimes in California. Then people die and, you know, riots pop off. And then the most evilest, baddest, solidest dudes are, like, fucking dead convict corpses. And they're like, yeah, never going home. But fuck this dead black fool. Now, there's some wicked shit going on in California state prison riots. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I get used to doing time a certain way in the West Coast. And in a lot of ways, I still hadn't grown up. You know, I'd gotten into some fist fights. I'd done whatever I had to do. And we'll get into that. Those are all different stories. You know, I think I'm going to do a Paul storyline because I have so many good stories about Paul. I think you guys would really like him as a character in the stories. I was trying to start a whole series on him. The one where he got lit on fire, I put on YouTube, but it, he actually died after that first one came out and it just made me not want to do it, but I will at some point, but you'll, you'll really hear about like how I grew up kind of getting in fights and never not once getting butt fucked, but doing a lot of time in Santa Barbara County jail. And still with all of the time that I had done, it, it didn't prepare me for being in the East coast where it's essentially lawless where there is homosexual activity. You hear it all the time. Oh, man. Yeah, I heard Stevie down in L Block. Yeah, he'd be fucking with some punk. Oh, man. I heard the punk got a phenomenal fucking ass, man. Oh, man. How much time you doing? I'm doing three or four weeks, man. But, you know, I'm trying to get some booty, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's... I sw I'm not even trying to be funny. That's exactly what they were talking. They're talking about homosexual activity. Now, I have nothing against it. It's not for me. I like pussy. Say it three times and it's true. I like pussy. I like pussy. I like pussy. Um, but I definitely don't want to get butt fucked against my will. I think that's kind of like universally understood that that's not chill, right? Like, how's the butt fucking? No, no, it's, it's chill, dude. Keep keep going. Oh, chill, bro. It's chill. It doesn't work like that. So I was scared of that. Now I got this guy kind of coming up to me and pressuring me into getting laugh now, cry later. He's like, you can pay on store day, right? I was like, for sure. I was like, hey, man, can you get any drugs? He's like, what kind of drugs you talking about? I was like, like heroin? He's like, oh, oh, no, no, man, no. Nah. Uh, that shit's a voodoo, bro. But I got you on some, uh, what they call it? I got you on some reefer, though. If you want, you know, this is the dirty south, guys. They call shit, they call weed reefer. Yeah, man. 
Oh yeah, well we got you on some reefer dough, yeah. So, as dope sick as I am, I've been in this situation many times in jail, you know, but this was the first of many, many, many. Weed really helps when you're dope sick, you know? If you, there's a lot of people that watch my stuff that always ask me, how do I kick? And that's a very amazing question that someone would ask because you simply don't do anymore. I guess the better question is, what can I do to alleviate some of the symptoms or to quell some of them? Um, besides, you know, recommending a bunch of dangerous narcotics, which is what I would do. And there's been a few situations, you know, in county jails where the only thing that I've had that could make me feel better was masturbation first, always first. And, and weed, weed definitely helps. So these guys end up giving me some weed. They give me like this little teeny, like, it's not even, look, I have weed right here. This is probably like what it looked like. It's like little, like that, like, I don't know if you can see, hold on. Oh, shit. Like that would be like 50 bucks. You know, like a little, like something that you would just dust off your pants. Like something that, see with weed, people don't realize that you can smoke a teeny, teeny, teeny amount and you can get stoned multiple times off a, off a small amount of weed. So they, they sold me this. Plus I had no money on my books, remember? I hadn't talked to my uncle. I hadn't talked to my family. I was thinking that maybe my uncle would put money on my books. But then again, he did send me money that now is obvious that I used to get heroin and I was in jail for it with possession with intent to sell. He probably thought that I was standing like on the street corners trying to sell heroin, you know? With like the few hundred dollars that he sent. But I mean, still, the point of the story is that I'm impulsive. And when I'm in jail and people ask me if I want to buy stuff and they're like, do you have money on your books? I'm like, you know it, brother. Got you for sure. For sure. You can count on it. And I've always been like that. I've gotten beat up over it before and I'm still just like, yeah, dude, I got you. What? Your chick needs a Honda? Got you? Let me call my chick. Hey, babe. Need you get this dude's chick a Honda. She's like, I'm on it, honey. Yeah, right. But that's like how I am in there, right? So he ends up giving me this little amount of weed. Now with methadone, because of the half-life on it, it takes a while for you to be like in full blown, like just insane, like, you know, bird fart shit or, you know, or it's just like a trombone and a Olympic sized swimming pool sounds coming out of your ass. Like where you're just like, because methadone does get like that. It gets agonizing. It gets to the point where you're screaming in withdrawal because it's so bad. Um, now, these guys were, they had a bunch of weed in there. That's the only drugs that they had. And they had like little real street papers, like zigzags. So for 50 bucks, I got a little bit of weed. Probably could smoke like three or four times by myself, even though it was like minute amount. And they gave me papers. And they showed me how you can make a flame by taking lead out of pencils, getting toilet paper and wrapping, so it's like tongs of um, of lead, and you put those in an electrical outlet, and then you know you can you can bust a flame or bust a socket, however you want to, whatever you want to call it. They call it different stuff all over the country, but you basically have like a piece of toilet paper that catches the flame, so. Like, I had never done that, surprisingly. Um, Santa Barbara County Jail, there were an area back then where you could smoke called the Honor Farm. So in areas that they didn't have matches like they did on the Honor Farm, people from the farm would send it down. So we never had to deal with this. This is the first time that I'd been somewhere where we had to learn how to bust a socket like that, pop a socket to light the joint. So I'd start and you'd go in the shower and you'd smoke. Now, they start talking to me really fast. All right, man, this is what you got to do. You got to do this, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, um, what do I do? I just want to get high. You know, I'm like not even really paying attention. But what he was telling me was be careful because they're, the cops, if they smell it, they're going to come in here with the SWAT team and they're going to spray us with pepper spray. I was like, um, okay. 
And then this guy comes up, his name, I swear to God, this is on Nico. This sounds bullshit. This guy comes up to me, his name was Mad Dog. He was like the grimiest fucking black fool I've ever met in my life. He, he came up to me and like, hey, man. Hey, let me smoke that with you, man. Just tell me no, then. Just tell me no, then. Just tell me no. Meaning, I, I mean, I could have said, I, you know what? I'm going to take, you know what? No. Nope. I'm smoking this by myself. No. He probably would have stabbed me. So I'd just be like, oh, <laughs> all right, Matt Dog. Yeah, you can smoke with me. Oh, no, no, no. Just tell me no, then. And he'd like smoke the whole thing and he'd like leave me like a little teeny hit. You know, the kind where you'd have to burn your fingers and your fingers turn yellow. I'm blowing it out and they told me that, you know, you basically have to blow it into the vent, finish up, I'm walking back to my bunk. I feel this nice head change, even though I burn my fingers because Mad Dog hadn't been very generous with me with what he had left me. And so I'm, I'm like kind of all, you know, feeling all stoned and happy. And I'm like, yeah, all right, still kicking methadone, but it really hadn't kicked in where it was severe yet. And then you just hear the thunder roar of the SWAT team running in. They're like, everybody down. And I'm just like, oh, I was, and when you're stoned like that, just everything, it just is so intense. You know, you feel like you're in some thriller movie where everything's just like, ah, 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 ah. you're like, oh. like, and you know, and I, I still had like a little piece of weed, you know, and, and you're like hearing, and Mad Dog's like, yo, yo, hey, yo, Callie. Hey, man, uh, they find that weed, man. You're getting fucking 25 years in prison, man. I'm like, what the fuck? And I didn't even have time to conceal it. I did have it cheeked, but I didn't have time to hoop it. So it's just, it's just so to give you a visual um, understanding of what that means, when you keister something or when you hoop something, you take said object and you stick it in your asshole. And you have this little, it's like, you know, your fingers. It's like this little cavity. It's called a suitcase. You know, you see like the biggest, baddest gangstar dudes with bro chops. Go, what's up, fool? You got that? And then they'll like take like some like super ornate like dagger. It's like some antique dagger with like a pottery handle and shit. People can stick some, these big macho guys can stick humongous things up their assholes. That's keistering or hooping. The alternative is cheeking. And that's just when you put in your butt cheeks and you clench them together. And that's what I had it in. I just had it there. I didn't have time to do anything with it. And I was frozen in terror. I was sick. All these black guys were mad at me because it was my fault. And then the spray comes. It was like a skunk tail going off in there. And I remember just coughing. <coughs> and I couldn't see anything. And then I just felt a knee on my back. And I felt handcuffs go on me. And I fucking knew that I was fucked. Palabra.